Let's look at these graphs, shall we? Now, uh, 2 cos x plus 1. 2 cos x plus 1. The normal range of cos x is what, normally? This is actually really helpful. I'd love you to write this with me if you haven't already. Bad choice of color. The regular range of cos x is between negative 1 and 1. Do you agree? Yeah? yeah? So now if I want the range of 2 cos x, well, you multiply the cos x by 2. So what's going to happen to the other two parts of the domain? You also multiply them by 2. So it'll be negative 2 to 2. But actually the thing I'm dealing with is not 2 cos x, it's 2 cos x plus 1. So in order to have plus 1, well, I just add 1 to both of my things. Like that. Do you see that? Do you see how I went from here to here? And then from here to here. It's actually really, really important, especially when we get to inverse trig later on. So that's why I go from negative 1 to 3. It's very important you get these intercepts down here. And so that's why I've worked them out down the bottom. Okay? Can we go over the page? Ready? So, question? How many marks would I lose if I don't have it? So if I got the perfect one. Yeah, one. Okay. Wait, so can you show us that you got the intercepts? Oh, okay. Here are my intercepts. So, to find the x intercepts of anything, you let y equal zero. Because that's where all the x intercepts live. On the x axis, the equation of which is y equals zero. So I let y equal zero. The equation of the line is y equals 2, two cos squared, two, 2 cos x plus 1. So I said 2 cos x plus 1 equals 0. That's, that's my line here. Uh, I just had to rearrange, change the subject. Cos x equals negative a half. And that's the basic trigonometric equations we've been dealing with over the last week or so. Okay. So I got my two values out of that. Quadrant 2, quadrant 3. As you can confirm by looking at the graph. Okay. Alright, let's go over the page. Minus sine x, that should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, boy. Yep. Uh, very convenient there. Okay, here's my cosec 2x graph. So what I've done is I've noticed that cosec is the reciprocal of sine, right? So if it's 1 on sine 2x, the first thing I do is I draw sine 2x, right? That's my gray graph. Do you see it in there? That's sine 2x. Uh, I've got two copies of it because that's what the 2x does from 0 to 360. So you see it waving up and down. Once you've got sine 2x in place, then you say, okay, well, let's do some reciprocals, right? There are some easy spots. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. Uh, and I've got another copy there. The reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1. So that's why you've got these two guys down here. After that, you say, well, look, see how these are small values? Well, the reciprocal is going to be big. And see how this is a small negative value? Well, this reciprocal will be a big yeah. negative value. Yeah. Question? Do you have to put the 45? Uh, if you didn't put the 45, you're, you're probably going to be OK, so long as I can clearly recognize, or your marker can clearly recognize, look, that should be halfway. But you know, it doesn't take that much effort for me to put it on, and that way I'm uncertain, cool, the, the marker can see I know what I'm doing. So if that wasn't there, you could probably get away with it, but I put it there anyway. Uh, your last graph. So there's cot x. We did this graph before. You'll notice I wrote down this. That's just to help me remember. You get vertical asymptotes whenever a denominator is zero, right? That gives you vertical denominators. Uh, sorry, vertical asymptotes rather. So I know sine x really, really well. So I know the places where sine x is 0, so I put 1, 2, 3 vertical asymptotes, and then I fit the rest of the graph around that. Uh, what's this? What's this guy here? What do we call it? Uh, locking point or point for scale. Either of them, you do need one for this one, rather than the previous one where it was ambiguous. Here, you've definitely, definitely got to have it, because if I erase that, this could just as easily be 2 cot x or 3 cot x. Uh, or actually, no, I take it back, sorry. You've got uh, this scale over here, which actually means that this, you actually have to draw that quite accurately so it's 45. But um, I've put it in anyway because it's hard to see that that's exactly its angle. Okay. Wow. So how do you know the shape of it? How do I know the shape of it? Um, 
you've got to think to remember back, okay, this is 1 over 10x. So what does 10x look like? And then think about doing the reciprocal just like I did for this question. Okay. Though to be honest, the quickest way for you is to remember what this, that thing looks like. Well, you can draw cos x and then you can draw sin x and then divide one by the other. That's actually a really hard skill to learn. That's an actually an extension to skill. Whereas uh, looking at something and doing its reciprocal, that is something that's considered an extension to as well, but it's a lot easier to think about. Like reciprocal of one, I can do that. Reciprocal of a little number, it's big. That kind of thing. Last question, pretty easy. That's it. There's not really much to say on that. Uh, you just have to look at these guys and say, well, that's cot. And then you have to look at these guys and say, well, that's tan. And then you just expand brackets. <laughs> I like wrote all my tricks and I looked at the question. This, by the way, this is a bit of a um, smoking gun. See this? See this? Remember, I told you, you you have one eye on what you're working on and the other eye on where you're going. If you're going to zero, this had better be something really simple, right? So that's how I I didn't I didn't you know devolve down to sines and cosines. I could have, but it would just be the long way around. Okay. <laughs> Tan is the reciprocal of cot. So tan times cot is one. But there's actually not just a cot there, there's, there's cot times cot. So one of them is left behind. Okay?